Uh, this is Dr. Srikant from Team MDS Conquer and this video is as per the student's demand. So of course uh, we are approaching towards the examinations and uh, hardly the need is less than two months and the aims is in and around like 30 days. Of course you can call the recent aims as I-N-I-C-E-T okay whatever it is. So the main important aspect that is required as of now is I mean like most of the like if you st take out the success stories of most of the students of all uh, MDS conquer all in my name okay there are two things which are really required in this last two months okay so the two aspects are one is stealing time okay you have to steal as much time as possible and you have to invest that time into preparation so people who read more in this last phase has high chances to be successful or their performance will be better than what they're expecting okay time stealing time is one of the important aspects so stealing time is a is the biggest thing as of now the second one is never repeat the mistake okay so never repeat the mistakes like this is a phase where you have to go for more practice so more mcqs getting more mcqs being exposed on the group or getting more mcqs being exposed on the website or in the mock exams in the module exams whatever it is like whenever you you're wrong in a particular aspect for example uh, i was giving an exam today on perio and I, I i went wrong in two mcqs related to flaps so your weakest area in perio is going to be flaps so you have to read flaps in such a way that either you can cover flaps from the from the discussion part either you can cover the flaps from the video based discussions either you can cover flaps from your uh, power play books or from Karanza or from any mcq books that is available for you so you read so many things so you can cover flaps from any of these areas but make sure if a question is coming from flaps again again either in your mocks or either you know on your group or anywhere anywhere make sure 99 percent is you have to go for the right answer if you are successful in these two principles okay so i mean like basing upon the exposure that we have planned for you in this upcoming 55 to 58 days to take your final exam neat if you follow these two steal as much time as you can invest them on the preparation or on the tasks of the group and the second one is never repeat the mistake from the same topic if you maintain these two there are high chances that your performance is going to be better than what you expect so you keep your target something so definitely you're going to uh, get something better than what you expect so straight away we'll go into the uh, quick recap of few aspects of perio as per the students demand so the first important aspect that you have to make a note questions there are many questions on immunoglobulins of course we have learned immunoglobulins at our best during our microbiology go back and watch the immunoglobulins video where you can answer n number of questions but right away the question is immunoglobulin which is present in saliva or immunoglobulin which is present in gcf okay this is the most commonly asked question so the predominant immunoglobulin that is present in saliva is you can make a note that is iga and the predominant immunoglobulin that is present in gcf is igg okay so these are the two important points this is predominant the question is as predominant then you have to go for iga regularly your gcf and your saliva will have all these immunoglobulins igg iga and igm but predominant in saliva is a and predominant in gcf is the g okay so apart from this one more immunoglobulin based question okay down syndrome patient okay you have your down syndrome right so down syndrome patient has less caries he has less caries the reason why he has less caries is because he has more iga immunoglobulins compared to a normal individual if you compare the serum levels of immunoglobulins in downs and normal individual iga are more in downs patient that is the reason why the downs patient will have less cares okay so these are the questions which moves around the next question is antibacterial action in saliva is mainly due to so antibacterial action in saliva is mainly due to these three components that is iga which controls the bacterial colonization lysozyme this lysozyme is also present in your tear drops 
that is that helps in breaking the saliva i mean breaking the bacterial walls and lactoperoxidase that helps in the oxidation you have oxy right that helps in the oxidation of oxidation by which it causes the lysis of bacteria so these three components are primarily responsible for occurrence of antibacterial action in the case of your saliva all other functions are important okay so because the few questions which are previously asked that is the questions on lubrication lubrication is basically due to the lubrication is basically due to the glycoproteins and mucoids okay and buffering action of saliva is primarily due to the three components which we have discussed out of which the predominant component is the bicarbonate okay so all this all this this table is very very important just do make a note of the table and move into the next question that is anti biotics which can be detected in gcf there's a most commonly asked pharmacology question the answer goes is your tetra cyclins and the second one is your metronidazole so these two are predominantly can be detected in your gcf the next question the question is a question that is given in the neat previously is predominant cells in established lesion of gingiva so these are the stages of gingiva lesion that is the initial lesion which is 2 to 4 days early lesion 4 to 7 days established is 2 to 3 weeks right the question is the predominant cells in established establish the predominant cells of the plasma cells initially you will have this acute cells that is polymorphonucleosides in the initial stage but once it is converted into the acute stage these polymorphonucleosides in the next level the second level they are going to replaced by lymphocytes in the third level they are going to replaced by the plasma cells which are also called as the mammary cells right so they can ask you the clinical features like uh, gingival fluid flow will be high in stage 1 uh, the change in the size structure and uh, the color can be appreciated in the established lesion so all these are interlinked questions can be asked okay so blood status is can be seen in the case of stage 3 so that's about the stages make a note of stages days and the vascular changes changes in the junctional epithelium and circular epithelium predominant cells is of course the most commonly asked question and they can link it with that of the clinical features okay it's very good next moves to the next question that is called as co adhesion and co aggregation so what is the difference between co adhesion and co aggregation co co adhesion is is the is simple it's like bond between the tooth and the bacteria whereas co aggregation is the bond between the bacteria and bacteria so the next question that is asked co aggregation is predominantly seen in which type of bacteria option a positive positive option b negative negative option c positive negative option d all of the above so this is the most commonly asked question so co aggregation is seen in the question is co aggregation is seen in seen in which of the following is the question the answer is all of the above co aggregation the same question is predominantly seen in predominantly a word added if predominantly is added then you have to go for a negative negative so co aggregation is a bond or an affection between bacteria and bacteria which is predominantly seen in negative and negative but which can be seen in any sort of combination it is seen in all the combinations but it is well or predominantly seen in the case of negative negative combination so that's an important thing that you have to make a note the next question is the question of primary and secondary colonizers questions which were repeated in 2018 neat exam 2019 neat exam 2018 aims exam of course 2019 they have given the same exam in 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 the pga okay so they just ask you to identify which of the following is a primary colonizer so these are the list of colonizers that you have to make a note which of the following is a primary or early and which of the following is a secondary so simple you have to make a note about the names it's difficult but they are asking questions so make a note which of the following is a primary all of the following are primary except which of the following is a secondary so everything is very very important a simple logic i can give you is all your stepto related stuff that comes at the primary okay so you can you can just try to come out with some ideas and just try to remember it 
and second thing of course the colonization okay the the, the complexes are very very important we have a video on different types of color coding in which we have discussed the complexes you have a video on microbiology of perio and the dental caries in which we have discussed about the complexes but make a note early complexes are your yellow and purple whereas your secondary colonizers are the rest others that is the green orange and red and red is basically associated with the bleeding and probing which of the following complex is basically associated with the bleeding and probing and of course it's the most commonly asked question switch bacteria comes under which complex is a regularly asked question and it revolves around your mcq books so please do make a note as of now when you're watching this video so done with primary and secondary colonizers done with the complexes make a note complexes and their examples are very very important in examination point of view Okay, done for now. We'll be coming up with one more video related to this quick recap on students' demand from MDS Conquer. Thank you. Signing off, Dr. Srikant from Team MDS Conquer.